and then I'm going to start going live here. Very exciting. And I'm going to continue. And I'm going to go live here. Let's see if it all works, shall we? Got it. Everything's being live streamed. How exciting is all of this, right? Ooh, it's all working. Very exciting. This is waiting to go live. This is gone live. And that is definitely live. God, what a blow up picture that is, but whatever. Hi, everyone. My name's Lee Hanish. Uh, glad to have you all on today's call. Uh, I am the former head loss mitigator for IndyMac Bank's HELOC division. I started uh, banking and real estate in 1988, uh, working for my father's company. I wanted to be a chef. He wanted me to do REOs and foreclosures. Go figure. And if you're wondering if that has deep lasting psychological scars, let me confirm it for you. That's an absolute fact. And so my therapy bill continues. Uh, I've worked for different banks. I've been a real estate agent. I've been a land developer. In 2007, I taught everybody how to do short sales. Uh, and then three years after teaching everybody across the country how to do short sales, I uh, wound up opening my own company. And the number one request that I got in 2010 was how do I get more, right? It wasn't my plan to use my business or my marketing background or my macroeconomics background or my banking background to talk about the market and, and utilize that for marketing. It was what I knew for me that always got a job. And I tried to convey that information to the people that I educated. Uh, just so you understand what we're doing here today. I'm dyslexic. I um, suffer from all kinds of childhood trauma and all those things affect me in the way that I view the world. I don't like rejection, generally speaking. And in true reality uh, of all of that, I accept it. And all the marketing I'm about to teach you, which I've created since 2010, is based on me wanting to get face to face. But I want them to invite me to be face to face. A man I'd like to call mentor and friend, Seth Godin, wrote an amazing book called Permission Based Marketing that literally changed my life in 2010. And studying those books from that individual have allowed me to become and be named and be awarded uh, some really wonderful notoriety, I guess is the correct word, uh, as a marketing guy. 2010, I created a program that was the first permission-based marketing program for real estate agents that actually guaranteed face-to-face -face results. What we're going to talk about today is a way to guarantee listings. Mind-blowing, two years in the development. Um, I don't really care about all the awards and being named the top marketer for over a decade or even being able to guarantee appointments. Uh, this program that I'm going to lay out for you and everything that I'm going to talk about today uh, is literally about guaranteeing a listing. This is what all the top people do. If you guys go online right now, this is what all the top brokers are teaching as their Christmas gifts or whatever, or the 12 days of video. I'm just going to cut to the chase on all of it. Uh, I call it red marketing. Uh, there was a book written called Red Marketing, and I recommend calling it. I call it real estate dealings, which is another word for listings. Uh, and I know that I have investors on the call as well. There is no way around content marketing for any of you, period. No way around it. If you are not doing content marketing in some way, shape, or form, starting right now, okay, you are hurting yourselves. Uh, and here's why. And I'm going to talk about all the market conditions right now and why you need to be able to create and get listings exactly as I'm doing right now, behind a camera, behind a microphone, sharing your message and connecting, creating like trust and expertise. Those are the three things that will get you hired. Okay. I don't care what books you read on the topic of marketing. I don't care who you're 
guru or master or marketing platform starts with. The very simple reality of why I'm teaching everybody red marketing, we have a goal here at Home Advocates, which is to help a million homeowners and to train a thousand real estate agents. That's our goal. I'm, I'm out of, I'm going to stop sales it when I reach those numbers, because I'll probably have to hire people at that point. Uh, we are a mom and pop shop, right? There are three of us who sit on the board here. Uh, I myself just do what you see me doing right now. I create content. I connect. I do all the coaching calls. Uh, Derek Kelly is our CEO. He's a brilliant individual. He cares about the experience for all of you. Uh, and our COO is Fred Solomon, who I've worked with and trust uh, that I've worked with for, good Lord, not to date Freddie, but I believe it's uh, 14 years. He saw me speak at my first large event, and he's been one of my biggest supporters and a very good personal friend of mine. I put people around me that I trust. I make it a point uh, these days to not drink the poison of the past and work with toxic people uh, to be involved with individuals that are hurting me. Real estate, by and large, what I've learned over the 30 plus years of working in real estate and banking and marketing, uh, real estate seems to be about talking about what others have that you don't have. Does that make sense? When I go to cocktail parties and mixers or networking events is there sometimes lovingly referred to even the Christmas parties you're coming up on <coughs> excuse me good lord choking on my keto coffee too much butter in it and thank you I've lost uh, nearly 50 pounds I'm very excited so the reason I tell you all that, we go to these events and we wind up, right, talking about what other people are doing or what other people's listings they have, or we look at the people at the top of the food chain. That's great. Um, and I completely understand that. And I completely under, uh, understand the have and have nots thing. I'm here to focus on all of you that are here live, all of you that are watching this on replay, all of you that are watching this on the stream. You have an opportunity here as the new year begins to change how your business is and how it's structured. Does that make sense? It doesn't matter what you've done up until today. It's what you do the minute you get off this call. It's the action that you take. It's the things that you create. It's the environment you feel. Uh, I'm lucky enough to work with people that are supportive and care about the customer experience. We are trying to reach a million homeowners, right? That doesn't preclude working with traditional buyers and traditional sellers. Our, our main focus is on people who are, right, who are currently in distress. And some of you are here today just to learn market facts, right? What's going on with the market, right? I'm in California. I'm in San Diego, California. Beautiful day after the storm. Uh, but yesterday was pouring rain, lost power, or had half power, then lost all my power, right? And, and those are very real things as well. Um, the reason I'm telling you all that, I couldn't, you couldn't physically go out. You couldn't go out and meet with people. The rain in San Diego means that I guess it's the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And so business stops, businesses close. I don't want that for any of you because the reality when people can't go out, they come in. We have two factors that are very overwhelming to the market right now. Number one is very dramatic weather happening throughout the United States. Some of you are here in California. Some of you are in Colorado. Some of you are on the East Coast. You're all facing different uh, weather issues at this moment. I want to share with you my solution to all that, that I have worked on for over two years to the point where I can now safely say that if you do this uh, for 90 days, you will get a listing, period, period. Uh, it's that simple. Uh, I don't know of any other way long-term 
to combat the solution of people inviting me over, COVID, et cetera. <clears throat> whether or not it's actual, whether or not it's political, the reality is everything is based on perception. Does that make sense? Your clients base all of their thinking on content. And I use that word, some of you would use the word news, but all of your clients are basing their reality, their actions, their buying, their selling on content. What they see on YouTube, what they see on the news, what they hear from a friend, that's content. And understand all content is generally designed to sling a pattern. Okay. And generally, all of that content is designed to sell something, right? If I walk up to someone and I, I say this all the time, there are things I know and there are things I think. I'm going to share with you things I know today about the market going into next year. And I'm going to tell you the things I think. I will clearly define those. I am an expert. At marketing. I am an expert at distressed properties. I'm above average at real estate, having done it for over 30 plus years. Um, I'm, an ex I'm an expert at understanding banking, right? These aren't things that I think too hard about. I know how these things will play out based on my experience and time, my education, the work that I put in, the literally millions of real estate agents that I have educated and trained throughout the years. And today is the first time I've ever done a formalized explanation of the concept of content marketing for real estate agents. I call it red. It's called real estate dealings. The end of the day, no matter what I do, I jam more people at the people that I currently train with our 12-step program. We used to refer to it as monster marketing for some of you that are that have been around that long. Uh, that program still exists. It's still very much in play. That's not what I'm here to discuss. I'm here to discuss a market where there are only approximately 400,000 transactions going on in the United States, right? That's the truth. It's about the same number that it has been historically for about the last five years. We've always had about the same number plus or minus. So don't get caught up on this buy, sell, demand, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to show you all the numbers. The reality is they've always stayed about the same, but they focus on these little tiny percentages to make you, make you through content, be afraid, right? If I'm a real estate coach doing traditional listings, and I know that marketing is not working based on the current market, right? I'm going to tell you that it's based on you and the amount of effort you are putting in. I don't believe that. People who've worked with me and a good majority of you have either heard my messages in the past or you've watched my webinars or you've been coached by me throughout the years. Know this as a fact uh, about me, right? This, I, I don't believe in working harder. I believe in working smarter. This red really came to a head of, I'm going to get people listings. The day I watched a video by a very famous uh, coach, and it was about commitments you need to make as a real estate agent or an investor. And it said, you need to commit to 40 to 50 hours of hard work per week to get a listing. Well, that's complete crap. Nobody got into real estate or investing to work 40 or 50 hard hours to <laughs> be successful. And that's the truth of how I feel personally. I work smarter, not harder. Red, my 12-step program, this entire company that was created are about training real estate agents and not working harder. It is about working smarter. It is about creating connections. It is understanding that we all have limitations and liabilities, truthfully. You could easily be talking to a client that tugs on a heartstring or emotionally triggers you. I'm aware of all of these things, right? How do I 
overcome my desire to want the listing or the deal and create a relationship. Without creating a relationship, I'm not very good at them, to be brutally honest. I fail a lot at relationships. Uh, So that's what Red is really about. How do I convey who I am to the client so that they want to connect with me, right? How do I convey the message that I am trustable, I am likable, and that I am the expert? How do I create a funnel? How do I repeatedly put that specifically into markets where I want listings and deals? Does that make sense? So we're not talking direct marketing. Understand that there are three types of marketing for real estate agents to be successful. Uh, With the program we're going to talk about today, we're going to knock out uh, two of them, right? I believe that you do need a direct marketing approach, period. And um, I suppose you should be doing that, but based on what's going on outside, it might be a little difficult. In fact, we're adjusting it right now to start including uh, Zoom meetings again so that people have a comfort level. Those of you that know the Monster Program, the award-winning Monster Program in the book that I wrote, we still do it. I've improved it. I I added an automated call center to everything. And it still works exactly the same. We provide you the leads. All you go is put out our marketing piece. It's all automated. You get appointments, go and meet with them. And it's based on distressed property. Not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about the other two things that are equally as important, in my opinion. Number one, right, is being able to do referrals and being able to have people refer to you or at least remember who you are right? Creating content that creates connection, that creates you at top of mind. The second uh, item is digital marketing, which in my humble opinion, having studied this, creating this, two years of developing it to the point where we are now in the final test phases. uh, And that's why we're talking about it. Uh, I've already tested it. I know that it works. I'm running it with some agents right now. I know exactly how long it will take for them to get their first listing. Got to do 12 pieces of content. If they don't get their listing within the first 12 pieces of content, I'll re- I'm going to refund all their money. All of these people invested, right, uh, literally at cost. So the first question you have to ask yourself, Do you have 500 people? Let's go with a lower number. Do you have 300 people each week thinking of you for real estate to be trust, liked, and part of expertise? I'll take a minute. I'll even look up on the screen to see if any of you raise your hand. Do any of you, excluding the people I work with, they should, uh, have at least 300 people per week thinking of you? And are you creating trust and like and credibility and expertise and all the other things and all the other catchphrases that everybody uses in my industry, right? That's how it works. Most of you don't have websites. Most of you don't have content. Most of you aren't using your social media correctly. Most of you are flustered by the fact that there's only 400,000, you know, plus or minus transactions happening, right? The, the same number of listings is really occurring, right? And I suppose that if both sides, if we use two agents, <laughs> one, one for the sales side and one for the buyer side, well, we've employed at least half the agents on those. The other half, what are you physically doing at any given point, right? So here's how this little bizarre cycle of life continues. So the market becomes hard. The media perception, content perception tells you why it is. Then somebody slings something, right? And tells you it's your fault. You're not working hard enough. You're not out there every day. What if all of it is wrong, right? I know for a fact that real estate per se, getting listings and deals has literally 
literally and historically use the most prehistoric methods of getting you listings. If you haven't been keeping track of the people you've worked with, if you haven't been keeping up on emails with them, if you haven't been creating content and only sharing it with friends who are also in the real estate business, right? Sure, I'd start to believe that I need to do TikTok to get my next listing. Or it's about doubling down on Instagram or LinkedIn or what, whatever the latest drink of Kool-Aid is to get a listing. And in reality, they're all sort of true, but the bigger picture is this. It's about creating content. So to answer the first question that came up, the question is, what's the market doing, right? So I got to teach you a little, thank you, James. So let's talk about the market. If you're going to dive into the pool to be a successful real estate person, agent or investor, I know I got a mix on here. <laughs> The first thing you need to know is what do my clients think, right? If we were really doing this the correct way, you rewind it a little further. I think you should historically look at the people you've worked at. What are their ages? What are their demographics? Where are they located? How did I get them? That's your swimming pool. If you've been doing real estate, say like Antonio, who I work with for a period of time, Antonio could... I, I know he can. He can paint a profile of the clients he's predominantly worked with. That's your swimming pool. Let's target them. I'm going to keep using Antonio as the uh, victim. I don't know if that's right, Antonio. I know he's on the call. Uh, good friend, lovely person, biggest heart I know of in the business, to be perfectly honest. He is amazing. Uh, so he knows what his swimming pool is. He's been in the business about as long as me, for God's sakes. So he knows what's worked, right? And he works with me. Why is that? Because I force him to create content. I take that content and I put it in the swimming pool, but it's based on his swimming pool in the South Bay, in Southern California, the areas that he wants. And the messages that work. So to understand all of that, we need to be experts on what the mindset of people who are buying and selling are doing. I don't care if you want to focus on distressed properties. I don't care if you want to focus on probate. I don't care if you want to focus on expireds or canceleds at this moment, right? The number one first key to doing red marketing is you kind of have to know what's going on in the world because I, I used this example yesterday when I was talking about it. I'm right, gonna get the camera picture up. Okay, so here are your clients. They're being bombarded with a message, right? And then you come along and say, that message isn't true, this is true. Why should they believe you when they're friends, the media, YouTube, a friend on Facebook, somebody who, how do people, and no offense to anybody on the call if you believe this, how do people believe that the world is flat, scientifically speaking? Um, sorry if it makes me smile a little bit, but there's a large portion of people who believe it. Well, there's a group who are being bombarded with a message that the world is flat. People they put as experts, people that they put on a pedestal that they like and trust. How do we do that for you? I mean, that's, that's what this is about. How do I do that for you? Where they will drink your Kool-Aid. If you want to go my mentor and friend Seth Godin's route, how do we make you a tribe builder? How do we make you a purple cow, right? Feel free to read all those books. They're amazing. Uh, so that's what this is about, right? And then it doesn't matter if California locks me down because I can shoot it right here. I can create it right here. I can meet with you online here. I can Zoom with you right here. I can create that relationship. It's not about having the best drone. It's not about having the best CRM. It's not about doing 3D walkthroughs. In this market, you could have a box. And if it's livable and at the right price, eight investors are going to give you probably a thousand, uh, several hundred thousand dollars over listing price to make that successful. 
right? And sell that property for you. You don't even need buyer's agents. You just physically need the listing. Okay. How am I doing? Everybody with me so far? Everybody with me and following all this? I want to make you, and again, to anybody on the call who does believe that the planet is flat in my attempt to be more understanding for everybody involved. If you believe the world is flat, it's kind of not. It's not, but <laughs> that's, that's where we're going with all this. How do these people believe the world is flat? People they like, people they trust, people who they believe are experts. Well, how do we do this for you? Welcome to Red Marketing, everyone. That's the prelude. How's everyone doing? For those of you who haven't seen me in a few years, I'm Lee Hanish. I'm a little different these days. Over the last uh, year and a half, dropped a little weight, got myself back into the game. And I've changed my perspective. I've changed my views. And I'm happy. Are you happy? I've lost my father. I've lost relationships. I've everything you can imagine. So don't tell me it's that trauma in your life. Sorry, my therapist prefers me to use that word these days. But how are you viewing the world? Are you happy at this moment? Or are you looking at the haves and have nots? Let's change it. The next 30 minutes, I'm going to teach you how to do red marketing so that you can all do it. Simple as that. Got it? So first, let's make you a market expert, which is where this all started with, uh, I believe it was James who asked first on this one. I, I think it was James. I'm kind of scrolling and doing messages at the same time. Yeah, James was the first one to ask, right? All right. <sighs> Don't look at the haves and have nots, James. Do not do that. Look at you, look at changing you, change the color of your lenses, change your perception. I think I just quoted Rush. All right, it amused me. Nobody's doing anything in life to you. I, I would recommend for everybody on the call, read the four agreements, maybe a positive mindset, start reading the secret. Might make some dramatic differences in your life. So let's talk about this and make you market experts for being on this call, right? So up until mid-November, bring up a PowerPoint because I have one. Up until November, we were all getting a different message. Anybody recall what that message was at all? Anyone? 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 The Holly Smoot tariff bill? Wow, doesn't do it without me actually doing this first. So I've got to switch out. So let's do a screen share and share sound because I'm exciting like that. And optimize for video clips for you guys too, because we'll get some video too. Let's do it. Let's do it. And then I'm gonna swap. All right, let's go. Can everybody see me, see the screen? I can't see crap because it's not really working out that way for me. But I am doing, I am doing a screen share. Let me make sure that the screen shares are all, I wasn't, I'm screen sharing, right? Should all be working. Uh, I want to make sure you guys are seeing my screen, seeing me doing all of that. So where's my chat? I've got two screens going. There's the chat bar. Everybody can see everything. Uh, you should be looking at a Home Advocates logo and me. Theoretically, is that what's happening? I'm hoping. Thank you, Sarah. All right. All right, cool. So let's do this, shall we? I can see you guys over here to the left now. Swap there. All right. So up until uh, when was Thanksgiving? Because I, in my mind, Thanksgiving was the 24th. Was it the 18th or the 24th? I sit behind a desk a lot. But neither here nor there. Up until the day before Thanksgiving, that third, that Wednesday to be exact, we had a very specific market message. And tell me if these all don't sound very familiar, right? First of all, we were saying that we are losing buyers traditionally 
that they don't believe that now is the right time to buy a house. NAR released its numbers with the amazing year over year figures, even though they are clearly demonstrating in this graph that we've been losing 2.75% of that increase over the last couple of months. And in fact, when the December numbers come out for November and vice versa, January, they'll continue to show this slide because that's actually happening. What you're looking at are NAR stats, not mine. We have lost $10,000 of median home price appreciation over the last couple of months. And this is going to continue at a rate of about two and a half percent per month because we need to go back to an equilibrium point because we overappreciated based on low interest rates, quote unquote, supply and demand. I guess if you're talking about investors, you could talk supply and demand, but they were making it sound like everybody wanted to buy a house. No, investors wanted to buy a house. Okay. That's the truth. Buy a house for cash, fix it up, put renters in it, refinance it, turn around and have the loan pay for itself. And the math makes sense at these interest rates. That's what's happening. Okay, the number of those investors have decreased. Zillow got out it. Well, let's talk about it. <laughs> so a large portion of what made the markets go around uh, that were moving into different metros has now decreased by 30%. This is all up until November. These dates are October and into the first weeks of November, right? Then Zillow got out of the game. Remarkably, in November, out of the blue. Why? Selling off all their property below what they paid for it. Rumors that they were inflating their own market, this, that, and the other. My personal favorite of the pile, Wells Fargo during the summer. Oh, why aren't you was expressing outrage this morning after the bank informed them it is ending all existing personal lines of credit in the coming weeks and will no longer offer the product. The revolving credit lines typically let users borrow, uh, borrow $3,000 to $100,000. They were pitched as a way to consolidate higher interest credit card debt, pay for home renovations, or avoid overdraft fees on linked checking accounts. In letters to customers, the bank said it reviewed its product offerings, decided to discontinue the product, and close all existing accounts. It warned customers that the account closures may have an impact on their credit scores. Customers were given a 60-day notice that their accounts would be closed, and remaining balances would require regular minimum payments at a fixed rate. Senator Elizabeth Warren tweeting, not a single Wells Fargo customer should see their credit score suffer, credit score, excuse me, suffer just because their bank is restructuring after years of scams. Actually, my and favorite part coming up. Sending out a warning that simply isn't good enough. Wells Fargo needs to make this right. It does seem like it's a little bit unfair to these customers. They own the bank. of their own to have their credit stores. It's ridiculous. And then whatever it is. Wells that Fargo, is, is there a bank that fell from grace more quickly than that? Remember, it was... Warren Buffett, it was like they, they could do no wrong for right. so long. You know, and, and then, okay, so you create a couple accounts to, to pad your... Just a couple. <laughs> That's a, that, force, it, that was... Force insurance sales on people who don't have a car. Right, no, <laughs> yeah, it, they lost. Right. <laughs> right. That was a real thing. A real thing. Then we looked at mortgage delinquencies, which are there, right? Look closely at those lines. It's approximately two and a half million people in total delinquency. That doesn't count for the people who have forbearances, which is now almost all the way down to about a million. But they even define those weird, right? We don't focus on that upper line, which is everyone. We focus on like the green line or the blue line. And those are the numbers you actually hear about. You don't hear about the others. Right? Like, so it's really closer to 2 million. So you're talking about 4 million people that because of what's going on with forbearances and not being able to make payments and jobs and unemployment and all of that crap, there are about 4 million people who haven't made payments. And because we haven't turned the FICO system back on and because nobody's really foreclosing at a fast rate till next year, even though we've jumped uh, something like 75% in processing, they can still do year over years. Well, from last year, we're only up 0.1% in foreclosure activity. Well, last year was a pandemic. Why are they doing it? Because if you keep telling people that the planet is flat from trustable sources 
or at least they believe are trustable sources, voila. These are real numbers. These are real graphs. I didn't create these. And all of these things were being shown. By the way, my favorite is this one, which 5% delinquency would still be higher than what we started with in. And by the way, this doesn't include forbearance. They consider that a separate category. Just 5% of all people are delinquent, which by the way, was considered catastrophic in 2007. All of these things happened in 2007, which takes us to today. So let's talk about today, shall we? Uh, this is real time right now. So that happened right up until Thanksgiving. Then it all shifted again, right? So what is the news today? Well, let's see. This is today's national news today. Uh, I use YouTube because it pulls, it's actually got an algorithm that pulls from all the websites, all the major news cycles. And the first thing I noticed when I started doing this consistently, Fox to CNBC to CNN, all share the same stories. They put their own spin on it for their audience, right? That's a thing. But what am I really looking at right now? Remember, what they're selling right now is you buying and the holidays. So it's going to be about Omicron. It's going to be about trials. It's going to be about tornadoes. I don't see, you know, they still can't even completely get on board with like raising the debt ceiling, which would be an everything, everything bubble, right? They just, they've increased it again in the short term. We're just going to kick that can down the road, right? Raises it till 2023. Well, that's good news. One more full year of increasing a debt ceiling that we're still never going to pay off. So when does that mess in, right? But that's a secondary story and it's way too technical for people to understand that the entire economy would collapse if we didn't pay our bills. It's going to be about covid it's going to be about Mark Meadows. All the stories I just showed you were mainstream up until Thanksgiving. And then the holidays started. We're not going to talk about the economy. Do you see anything about supply chain? That hasn't changed. Where did it all go? Well, the logical solution was let's just pull business news. I mean, that's important, right? What are we talking about? Uh, Fed is actually going to, you know, taper which means the interest rates are going to come up. Retail sales rise 0.3% year over year from last year, which was COVID. Again, with this year over year figure, airline CEOs, oil prices slipping up and down. You guys see anything about the economy in here that I am unaware of? Because I look at this crap every single day. If you sneeze sideways, the stock market falls. I mean, let's be realistic about what they're showing here. The stock market is still in a bit of a decline, which a lot of people are saying is pointing to the current decline, right? Now you could take your same logos and you can make them green, you can make them red, you can paint your content however you want. But the reality of what I'm showing you right now, we're not talking about people that are unemployed. We're not talking about the people who haven't paid on their house. We're not talking about student loan debt that's being turned back on. We're not talking about you spending money anywhere else except on the holidays. Why? Because the people who are creating content based on like trust and credibility are busy selling Target and Walmart. So everything that happened prior to Thanksgiving no longer exists right now. Now I can fight that. And I can go target distress people right now. But trust me when I say this, when I get to the front door and I meet with them, guaranteed with my 12-step method, aka the monster method, they're going to tell me that the government's going to fix it, that they're not foreclosing on them, that they've already paid off their house, blah, 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 blah. Okay. I have four years fought against that and always thought that the truth would reign free. And again, I go back to this flat earth. How do people believe in flat earth? 
because they're bombarded with it and they only follow what they want to see. If I want to believe that President Biden is a robot, and again, no offense to anybody on the call who believes that President Biden is a robot and that he's really chained up and locked up under the Capitol and this is some kind of elaborate actor or Disney prop as our president, which would be the most shocking thing. Although, as a side note, I was watching a 1979 Wild Wild West episode. Yes, I'm that old. Where the presidents of all the countries and monarchs were replaced by lookalikes. So I guess it's plausible in the world of Wild Wild West in 1979 TV. So I guess it's plausible now, right? I don't. What do I know? What do I know? What I'm looking at on the screen is what my clients believe. Why would I fight with this? Which takes us to how do I use this? So I know my demographic. I know what I work with. I know what my swimming pool is. I know what I'm feeding to the fish. Let's use the fishing analogy. I know what I'm feeding to the fish in that swimming pool. The question is, how do I put something on the hook where they make a choice to eat the content that I create, or you can use the word bait. Uh, I believe he uses that in permission-based marketing. How do I get them to drink and eat from me? Well, the first thing you do is not fight with this. You can't. You can't beat this. You can't beat what I'm showing you on the screen. You can't beat the national news. You cannot. OK, because it's not just the news sources that I'm beating. It's my friends who watch this and then tell me about it. Oh, hey, what's going on with Omicron? They're not talking about it. Did you know it's literally spreading faster than the original contagion? Did you like do you know these facts that California, as well as a few other states, are seriously considering lockdowns again, seriously considering them? Okay. I don't see it on the screen. That's not real. That's not happening. It's Christmas. Do you know that the economy is having difficulties with the stock market that 4 million people plus or minus haven't made a payment on their mortgages? No, I, I didn't see it on the news. So it's not happening. I, uh, my daughter's stepfather, who I'm a very good friend with, a uh, wonderful man named Charles used to work for the mayor's office here in San Diego. And he said, people only know two weeks backwards and two weeks forwards. And I thought that was the craziest sentence he ever taught me some decade ago when he told me that. He goes, that is the way we create our media approach for the mayor's office. Two weeks backwards, two weeks forwards. It's a standard in politics. Two weeks back, two weeks forward. Well, what's it two weeks? The new year and Christmas. So you're not going to hear about the economy collapsing or people not making their payments or people starting to having to show up on FICO systems as extraordinarily delinquent, right? Till next year. What are we selling right now? We're selling Christmas. Be at home. We have tornadoes. We have shootings. You need to be around the family. Content, content, content. Stay at home. No supply chain shortage discussions. That's really shocking. Does anybody believe that supply chains have ended? No, they just changed their commercials. We have millions of gift ideas in stock. Might not be what you want, but we got millions of, a okay, cool. Don't fight it. Don't fight it, right? So let's focus on the three things you need to create your content about. Trust, like, and credibility, expertise. Um, I always say credibility, but it's expertise. Trust like expertise, right? Let's eliminate the like category. That's in the referral category. So we want trust, which is the best form to create an expertise because you're creating content. I can now use all of this. So what am I going to do? All of you that are on this call or watching this have the ability to record and stream just like this. In fact, if you bring up uh, I almost want to bring it over, but you guys all know that automatically your Zoom will record you. You turn it on like a recorder. You can stream 
from it for free for 45 minutes onto Facebook and YouTube. It will create a video into a cloud or onto your computer that you can download and upload and use again. There's no super trickery used here. There's, there's nothing you know highly clever. So what I do after I compile all this data is I turn around and then I create content with my clients. The reason I do it with them, most people are camera shy. You are. You're thinking to yourself, I could never do that, right? I could never do what people do on YouTube, right? I could never, ever do that. I've watched it now for 10 years of people utilizing YouTube in different ways. When YouTube was the hot thing, then it was LinkedIn that was the hot thing, then it was Facebook. And then everybody told me, oh my God, why are you on Facebook? Because everybody above the age of 35 is on Facebook. Get a life, get a grip. You're saying that because you don't want to pay for the expensive ads. You don't know how to use it correctly. The only people you connect with are people that already know you. You got their listings already because of like. So how do I reach a new audience without spending more? My opinion, not a think thing anymore. This is a fact that I know. You should be reaching 300 to 500 per week based on trust, like, and credibility for approximately $100 a week. That's my at cost price to do this correctly per person when I do it, okay? I don't make a single dime on the topic because I'm just running the specifics. I want to be able to target that swimming pool for Antonio in the South Bay based on his demographics, based on a specific data type, right? And I want to feed those people a constant stream of trust, like, and credibility. Got it? I use this format to create it. If you can't do it, do what everybody else does. Do a Zoom webinar. Here's an easy one. Interview local people, local shops, and make yourself the expert of an area. I don't care what it is at this point, but most, if not all of you on this call, don't have a website, don't have landing pages, don't have squeeze pages, but you buy CRMs and $5,000 websites that nobody's traveling to. Nobody. Well, why? Well, somebody convinced you that just having a website is digital marketing. By just paying, you know, a dollar a click or $2 a click or $3 a click to as much as $5 a click, Zillow or Google or stop, stop, create your own stuff, put it into that swimming pool. Got it? And I'm going to show you exactly where I put it so that you can do it. It's not hard. If I know all these factors, I can now, I have Antonio at one o'clock. I believe I have uh, another one right after this call with Terrell. Somebody else is missing. I don't know where Jane is. That's not good. Uh, and Marvin, but yeah, I'm testing with four people right now. We're into multiple weeks now. I know the results. I know how many people it is. That's why I can tell you, you should have a listing in 90 days, period. If they don't have listings in 90 days, I'll give them their money back. And I'll still continue to do all their stuff for them, right? Because the reality is simply this. I know all these factors. How do I put them all together? Can I sit in front of a camera and do this? Well, first thing you need to know is you don't think like Ted, right? I recommend the book, Think Like Ted, uh, if you have a problem speaking or need to learn how to do it. You need to create 15 minutes, plus or minus, less than. I prefer under 15. I tend to clip them down. I don't go over if I can help it unless it really changes the dynamic message, right? And I'm going to place that in certain areas. Uh, the first is YouTube, right? YouTube in general is pretty simple and straightforward, right? All of this are the top trenders, period. But all you do is open up, create an account, click the create, upload a video. That's it. Stop overcomplicating this. That's it. Just upload a video. That's it. 
or stream it live, it'll automatically become content on your page. Then go over to Sprizzy. I spend $30 per client on Sprizzy paying for their ads, right? Go to Sprizzy and create an account. I cannot stress Sprizzy enough. It's well worth it by far. Let me try to get to the main landing page so you guys can see it. Sprizzy should probably, they use a lot of weird testimonial videos. There, there's Sprizzy. Uh, and they explain how it works, right? And why is it so simple? It takes me two minutes. I know for 30 bucks, I'm gonna get several hundred views here for that price. Targeted completely, targeted completely, targeted completely. I mean, down to metros, down to cities, where that's the only place that my content's gonna be seen in an advertising format. Well, you've created content, you've based it on the news, 14 or 15 minutes, if you can't do it, find somebody locally and start talking to local businesses around you and interview them in a Skype format. They'll love it, you'll love it. You'll probably get a free donut in the process. The second place is Facebook, okay? I don't know why more people don't do this. I really, really don't. What you're looking at is my groups page, right? So when I create a piece of content, uh, currently I'm uploading everything onto Home Advocates platforms to create more credibility, which I do with all my clients, right? If you're with me, you're with me and therefore I should share that information. So the next big move here is uh, going, why is it not coming up? There we go. My Home Advocates page. There it is, Home Advocates, right? So I upload the content and I dynamically share it. Now the numbers might not be low, but here's my question. If I had 31 people watching a 17 minute video for Jane specifically targeted to her, right? Was it successful? They're not all winners. Some are better than others. Here's one from uh, a week ago with Antonio. It reached 180 people. He had 180 people see this message and he got an inserted plug for his restaurant as well. Why not drop a logo on it, right? You never know. Uh, out in the Valley, Dr. Terrell Miller, 106 people. This is a 23 minute video. We went a little bit long, that's on me. And it would have gotten a higher view rate, right? They were shared, they were engaged, people clicked. Do you know how much this costs if you were to buy this directly from Facebook? What I'm showing you here isn't difficult. What you do is just upload the video, just like you guys already know how to do. You click the share button, right? Make sure you're sharing as you. Now, as me, right? I'll show you. Take that video. Hi, everybody. Welcome to your weekly update for the Southern California area in real estate and pretty much the economy with our local Los Angeles County homeowner advocate, Antonio Otoche. How are you? I'm doing great, Lee. I'm doing great. Okay. Now, here's the next thing that I do. I take this video and I share it to groups. Right? Los Angeles stuff, buy and sell, Los Angeles home owners, Los Angeles real estate. I share it, share it in groups till it's reaching at least a million people, right? It's about retention curves and how long are people on. It's important. They'll give me all the stats. They'll tell me what works and what doesn't work. I'm actually going to start introducing this week, uh, not face. I think I'm doing Facebook ads, but a different way. I've got a different plan. I'm going to start targeting via email. In I'm going to buy demographic emails for people in South Bay and start following them and putting Antonio's message in there. That's it. The content is exactly as I said it would be, and it makes all the sense in the world. That's really what it's all about. Hold on one second. Uh -huh. <laughs>
Hey, we were just talking about the red marketing program, everyone, and we just finished another one uh, for Antonio, who now, over just a couple of videos, is rapidly approaching his first thousand viewers at a hundred bucks a week, which we were laughing about. That's yeah. guaranteed with a listing because I do get those kind of referrals into the the pipeline. What is it from your perspective that the reluctance is of other people in the program joining this? I think maybe they're a little shy being on camera, but you know, I, I, I'm on I'm recording, but you know, you get over it, man. You get over it. And every, every episode, you're going to get better and better. And you know, you just throw out all the stuff, you know, you, you're, you're a good realtor. You got a good heart. It's easy. Just go out and share what, what you know, and ask it, answer the questions Lee puts it on. But furthermore on the side, I mean, look, it's a hundred bucks a week. I, I was thinking right off the bat, I go, man, I know Lee knows all this background stuff He's on the background of all this uh, YouTube and all that good stuff to get them out there. I don't have time to learn that, but I do want to get my point across and I do want to be exposed to more. And we spend a hundred bucks in crazy things every week. Oh my gosh. Invest it in yourself, man. Invest it in yourself. Join, do something with it. Call Lee. Man, I'm telling you, I, it's the beginning, but I, all I, I can see that it's just going to grow more and more to good things. And it's just going to make you look good ultimately. And, and, and you're going to get deals out of it. I've been around sure. you've been around me for a long time so we already know how this plays out. Well, once yeah. I get it perfected and I know exactly what the numbers are based on a track record and it goes to 500 a week, which it's still a deal. Um I would say it, it you and I both know this. That's when everybody's going to go, hey, remember when you were willing to do that for like one lump fee for the entire year, like at a hundred dollars for 52 weeks? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. I made no money and I was humble and I worked very hard for my clients. Yeah. <laughs> I was desperate. Now you're rich. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I do. I, you're doing I, a great job and people should take advantage. That's what I would say to uh, my fellow agents out there in different states and and then you know do it man it's it just gonna help you it's, you're already spending 100 bucks somewhere for crap we don't need that week so save it for yourself invest it there you go uh, take advantage while i'm testing people i can't even stress it uh, it's just that simple uh if any of you are interested uh, i'm gonna answer questions until you guys want them all answered here and I'm going to go live with that. But uh, for those that are on the call, I just gave you a link. It doesn't have its own page. It's not a sales page. Uh, so Derek wants me to make the offer one more time because it is Christmas and you guys aren't going anywhere for the next four to six weeks and possibly be locked down. There is a PayPal link uh, for you if you want to get involved. See if I got this right. <laughs> there we go. It's hundred percent guarantee within the first 90 days. If you don't get a listing, we'll refund 100% of your investment. Plus we will still do the entire year of marketing and teach you how to do it yourself. Cause you'll be a better talker by the time I'm done with you and create a custom website. The, the bonus here today is I'm going to do websites and landing pages and increase the marketing exponentially. I would say right now, 40% of that $100 probably closer to 50% of that $100 is literally targeted advertising at the lowest level so that I get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people looking at you every single week in your swimming pool. And if you don't get a listing in 90 days, we'll refund your investment. No questions asked. It's PayPal. It protects you. That's about as simple as I can make all of that for you. Um, I appreciate everybody who's taken time out on this call. If you sign up, you'll get that plus all the bonuses and then some because I keep adding stuff to it ridiculously. It's kind of like some kind of quest that I'm on. There we go. Now I can stop recording.